Okay, uh, I'm going to be talking about our plans for self-service, specifically for change integrity. Um, so we kind of outlined these four big parts of self-service, right? So, so we need to fix the change integrity problem. And when I say that, what I really mean is snapshot queue, um, uh, queue updates and snapshot the CR config and, and automating that in a safe manner. And then field validation, tenants and roles and capabilities. Um, and we kind of came up with this diagram that's what I just showed. So again, change integrity, field validation, and some of these kind of lend to others. So roles and capabilities really means tenancy. And then we added in this DS request um, that is kind of a stopgap. Um, I don't know what people in open source use. We use Jira. Um, you could use whatever, however you get requests for delivery services. And well, now we have DS requests and traffic ops. Um, and then everything below this line is there's all kinds of things we can think of to help with self-service that aren't strictly necessary. So like changing uh, the, the change size. Right now we're transmitting the entire CR config that configs the entire CDN at once. We'd really like to do change sets or if modified or not modified since. Um, and we'd also like to increase the speed to propagate changes, whether that's reducing pull times or again doing a if not modified. Um, it's also been mentioned the cache agnostic config, um, having a configuration that works with any cache, and we're not just generating files on, on traffic ops for traffic server. Um, so again, what I'm going to be talking about is that change integrity, that upper left corner. That's, um, I think it's one of the algorithmically hard, probably the algorithmically hard problem that we have, um, to be able to safely do that snapshot in queue. Um, so, so the goals of this of this project is essentially no snapshotting the CR config. Um, if it happens, it happens under the hood. Users aren't doing it for self service. You know, you've got some random tenant on your CDN. You can't just be having them snapshot unsafely the entire raw database. How it works today. Likewise, they can't be queuing updates um, to all the servers for whatever just happens to be in the database. That's obviously not safe. It's not going to work. Um, it's a goal to have that happen automatically and safely, to, to safely send changes to the router um, and to safely send changes to the cache in a way that, for example, if you're removing a server, you can't just remove that config from the server until it's gone through the router and you're no longer routing new people to it. Um, and so that may or may not mean something like an apply button, right? So, so depending on how we do it, we we can have the snapshot still take place under the hood, but we can make it so every time you hit save, the API or, or traffic ops under the hood automatically does a, a, a snapshot, but it's transparent to the UI. Or you could have the save delivery service and apply button, and the apply button is doing what we currently call the snapshot for that delivery service. Um, that's, that's a completely user interface thing. But one of the goals for this for, for the project that we're doing is that's kind of awkward backward compatibility. Um, we want to be completely backwards compatible as much as possible, and we think that's possible with the plan we have now. Um, the plan we have adds a few new APIs inevitably, but it should the API should be completely backwards compatible. Um, and again, minimal additions. We're, there's a few things we have to add, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But hopefully, keeping them to a minimum. To, to again keep the API how it is and we can change that we can again do those improvements like like the change sets and size after this is done but but this plan that I'm talking about right now is is trying to achieve that safety in the minimal fastest way possible um, so again non goals uh, the change side the change speed the change sets versus the entire CR config doing diffs somehow the, the protocol whether we're still doing HTTP, whether we're doing JSON, maybe we want to do protobuf, we can do that in the future, not required for this project. Uh, that, yes? That's, uh, just want to understand what change, uh, change side. This is, this is relates what change, individual change of a digital service, the, the ability to changes uh, independently between the 
No, that's not what I mean by chain size. So when I say change size isn't the goal here, what I really mean is every time you change one little field, we push the entire CR config to the monitor. In fact, even if you don't do a change, currently the way it works is the monitor pulls traffic ops every 30 or every 60 seconds or whatever you set it to, it's configurable. Um, we do it like every 30 seconds, I think. Um, that's what I mean by this, is sending that massive blob of JSON every time something tiny changed or even if nothing has changed. Um, we will have to do, we will have to make delivery services independent. So again, it's possible for one tenant, one, one user tenant on your CDN to make a change to their stuff and push it out without affecting everyone else. You know, some, some other tenant is, is working on stuff. Uh, you, you obviously can't push out their half-finished changes, which is what happens today, right? You do a snapshot and it's everything. Right, and this plan solves that problem, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, yes, that problem has to be solved, and it will solve it. And again, breaking up the CR config kind of ties into the other ones, like change size, just to make it a point that it's not a goal of this particular project. Um, and, and in fact, I think this project, the plans we have, will make this easier. Um, it will make things like breaking up the CR config and doing change that's easier. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. But I added normalization that we talked about just a little bit earlier, just to say that's also not a goal. I think normalization would be great. I'm, I'm a big proponent of it, but this, this plan doesn't do that because it's not strictly necessary, and we're, we're trying to get this project done. Um, just to say up front, this is not a small project. This is something that could easily take a year, two years, three years. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of code changes. It's a, it's a lot of things we're going to have to do. Uh, so just an overview of how our plan works. Um, and again, uh, just, just to put it out there, we're really trying to, to, to give everyone an idea of, of the plan that we've come up with here at Comcast and we're going to be putting on the mailing list. Um, so everything I'm saying here, it's going to go on the mailing list uh, as soon as this conference is over, probably like early next week, and we'll put it on the wiki and everyone can review it in detail. The, the, we have a you know, a detailed design document. Um, but it's all timestamp based. So uh, it's a timestamp based state machine. So we've had these discussions before. Um, I don't know who all has been a part of them, but solving this problem of being able to push, you know, you, you make a small change and you have to decide, is it an addition or is it removing something? And if it, you're adding something, then you've got to add it to the cache, to that configuration, and then make sure it's on the cache before you snapshot and send it to the monitor and to the router. And likewise, if you're removing something, you have to remove it from the router and stop sending clients there before you remove it from the cache config. So in some fashion, that's going to have to be a state machine. Well, what we're doing is, is essentially an implicit state machine using timestamps. So every field will have timestamps. Every database row, almost without exception, will have timestamps. Um, and most of them do today. We have the last updated field, and I think we can reuse that. Um, everything we, you add will be an insert, not an update. So we have those timestamps, and again, one change might not have flowed all the way through the system, so you can't just do an update. You'll, you'll overwrite the old one, and maybe this hasn't flowed all the way through and it needs to get to the router before we send it to the cache. So we have to have that older record. So instead of inserting, we'll, we'll update, we'll, uh, I'm sorry, instead of updating, we'll insert, instead of the leading will insert, because again, you can't just remove the row because maybe you've got people doing all these things in flight, and we've got to have the record at least until it's gone all the way through the system and is on both the router and the cache um, on both ends. And that gives us, again, the complete history of, of all the row changes. Um, so the next step is to add delivery service snapshots. Um, like we said before, like Nir was just saying, we, we, you, it has to be independent. There's no getting around it. So in some way, you, you have to be able to have uh, someone able to change their delivery service and have that apply to what's currently the CR config and goes to the router um, without putting other stuff in there. So the current plan is just to make a table. It's a timestamp. Uh, again, it's all timestamp based. And we can dynamically build that section of the CR config by selecting all of the rows up to that date on that 
delivery service is snapshot. And like I said before, that can be implicit, so that can automatically happen when you hit save, or we can have an apply button on the delivery service that creates that snapshot. It's, that's a user interface decision, and we can even make that configurable. You know, maybe at Comcast we want to have the apply button, and maybe Cox doesn't, or, so maybe we even make that configurable in Traffic Ops. Um, the, those snapshots will have to include profiles, parameters, other tables, so all of the code that is building that CR config is going to have to do all of its selects. All of those select statements are going to have to be changed to select the latest up to that date. Yes, so the query is... So, so, you, so basically, the, the, you, you look in the table, you, let's say in your mind, you order it by date, by last updated, and then you go, you pick the last one that's there up to a time that you set. Which is that snapshot. And that's the line you pick for that uh, unique kind of key. Right. Understood. And it, it's a little bit complicated of a query, but I, I think most or all of this kind of logic can go in the database queries. Um, and so, it should, right? That should definitely yeah. be the goal at the database. Yeah. yeah. And so again, we need to add server snapshots as well. Like I was saying earlier, they can be hidden from the interface, um, just like delivery service snapshots. So it's the same problem. Um, you could theoretically, most, maybe all server changes won't be something that, that tenants are allowed to access, but even if that's not even if that's true, um, you still probably want your ops guys to be able to make changes and not, you know, stomp on things. Or maybe one guy's changing one server and one's changing another one. So to have that safety, we we need a server snapshot as well. Yes. Is, is, is why, I, why I'm not sure you need the server snapshot for your. Depends on what is your focus. Uh, the fo if the focus is uh, to streamline the delivery service and the deployment of the service and the, and solve the QRBTR config issue, service configuration is you, basically out of the, uh, not in the picture. You might be correct. So it, we, we would have to review it in depth to make sure there's nothing in servers that needs configured by, by somebody setting their delivery service by a tenant. Um, but even if that's true, it's, it would still be good to have that safety in the system. So again, so your operations don't have to be careful and, and be doing the whole Q snapshot dance. And you know, at Comcast, we call it the change chicken. You say, I'm taking the chickens, and nobody else is allowed. So, so again, you don't have that inconsistency. You don't have that danger. So, so yes, you, there's a good chance you're correct. You could technically possibly have uh, safety with, with self-service with tenants without doing that. But I think we should do the safety anyway, and I, I doubt it's uh, significantly more work while we're doing all this other stuff. Uh, we have to do the same thing for delivery services anyway. Um, so, so the timestamps are going to be unique for every single table? So there's no correlation across no. tables? For the is, there, is there a last known good state or some kind of state right. that you say, at this point in time, I know we were happy and we were we all went. To well, know, so the, break and the snapshot still exists, so that you'll still be doing a snapshot, and whether that happens with every delivery service change or not, that there will still be a database table that is delivery service snapshots and possibly an overarching snapshot that has that timestamp. So if you get in a bad state, you'll have all the previous ones. So that'll work the same way. Uh, it doesn't strictly have to, but there's no reason not to. So it'll work the same way, and you'll have, every time you do a new snapshot, it's, it's a new insert. And then if you have a problem, if you, this one was bad, you can just delete Would the row. Would you be able or, to generate those snapshots by saying, I want to go on? Correct, and that's, that's the plan. The plan is right. to dynamically, in fact, I think we probably have to, to yeah. dynamically build that CR config from from that, that timestamp. So when somebody says give me the CR config, you know, maybe we cache it for a second. But yeah, yeah. the plan is to dynamically say, yeah. you, you said give me the CR config, read the, the date, read the time for every delivery services snapshot, for every server snapshot, and build the config from those selects. It's similar to the uh, table, but this delivery service was not the snapshot. 
Yeah, yeah it's, 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 yeah, he uses time. And, it's, and time is going to be, yeah. Well, and so that's what I was saying earlier. It's, it's effectively a state machine. So you start to see how it's an implicit state machine. We wouldn't, we don't have to use time. You could use a number of other you ways to do this. Number or something like that. But I think time gives us a lot more power yeah. without being any more difficult. Yeah. Um, you get cash with time, too, so you just need to query time and deliver it. Right, and in fact, maybe we add endpoints for that in the future to generate snapshot for a given time just for debugging or, or something. It'd be really easy to do. Um, How so, did they improve your integrity? You basically promote your archival system where you can go back and retrieve and restore your archive. Right. That's an, that's an ancillary benefit of doing it this way. but. That's, I mean, the reason we're doing this is for the integrity because, again, when, when you have a change, you need to be sure that it's on the router. So how can you know that every change that somebody's made on a delivery service for some... So again, this, these are tenants making these changes, at, you know, Disney or, or MLB or whoever is paying you. Um, how do you know that their particular change that they just made at this time to this field is safely on the router or, say, they removed something? and it's safely removed from the router so that it is safe to send to the caches, or vice versa. How do you, you need to know that that's true in order to have that integrity. But I, th but I think we, what, what, what you're trying to say, or, or maybe what I was hearing is, we can still have customer one doing some changes and those are good, customer two doing some changes and those are like this, and now what do you do? Right, because this may be broken, but this is caught in, in the middle in between. You still have this this ordering problem. That would be that would be true if they have shared data, but they don't, right? So so delivery services, one tenant has one delivery service. So, so, so you're gonna another. So you're you're right if you have two people from the same tenant, you know, two people at Disney. No, no, no. Let's say editing the same two delivery different service. Ones. I want to understand that because I would think you're gonna be select from you're gonna be doing select from delivery service where timestamp larger than blah 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 and you know only for one. every delivery service. So you're going to also make, you said it was not a goal to do incremental changes, but you almost have to build incremental changes. No, and I said it's not a goal for incremental changes. That's not what I meant. I didn't mean in the way you're selecting it. I meant sending it out to the monitor. The monitor still says get slash snapshot slash then, CR config, I, and it's one big I file. I don't understand how, how does a user say to the system, I, I'm, I'm a, I have content that goes through the CDN, and I want to change my delivery service. How do I say I'm done? What is, what is the... So again, you can have that apply button, and what that actually does is it creates a delivery service snapshot for your delivery service. Yes. So there's a table of delivery service snapshots that has you know, your, your delivery service. I keep using Disney as an example. Disney, and you, you say apply, and it puts in a new entry with your delivery service, say Disney Live, and timestamp. And then when, and the way when's that you build the CR config is not by doing a select from delivery services. You're going to be doing a select from that CR config table that has all the delivery services in there. It's going to be it, some kind of joint. It, yeah, it, it'll be a joint. So you'll say select select from delivery service where for for Disney the. This ID, ID is, yeah, yeah, is not yeah, greater than yeah. this timestamp. Like I said, it's a complicated query, yeah, but it's I doable. I, I get it, and yeah. that will allow you to do that because then Disney can say, for me, use the one that is at this, but it's an ID, it's not a date then, really. Right? The, the date thing kind of gets away from everybody. I don't, I don't know how you mean. It is a date. It's a timestamp. And so but the, it's an individual date for everybody, every tenant, every yes. delivery service. Yes. That wasn't clicking. Right. Yes, it's every delivery service. So you'll have a table that says for Disney use this time, for that that person use that time. For delivery that. services and for servers. Yeah. So we, we'll need to do it for servers again, like like Nir was saying. Maybe we don't technically need that, but for operations, it gives yeah. them that safety. And that's the same as your iteration number or delivery service that's version. A, it's uh, very yeah, much the same. I think uh, uh, Robin, I should. Only go over the spec of this again, the little bit of cooking right now, and uh, join the yes. ID. Yeah. yeah. And, and the seer config is from all the applied ones, it, and that could be a whole bunch of different times when you hit the apply, and when you, it's not up to like today, four o'clock for everybody. Right. 
Yep. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, I'm that. totally rewriting it. So uh, to derail it a little bit further, um, have you considered an override for this such that wanted to make multiple changes in batches and have them all pushed out simultaneously so good because there are cases where you might share cache keys with your delivery services, for example, and say you wanted to change the origin for both of those at the same time. Yes, I, I would say I have considered it. Um, it would have to be a new API endpoint, right? Um, and I don't think it would be difficult. Uh, okay. As long as it's on the radar. So yeah, I, case, I, I think that is a value use case. So yeah, I would agree. To and, override it or and not just for delivery services, for servers, right? So operations might have some operational reason. They need to set all of these things on all of these servers at once. Um, so I yeah, absolutely yeah, agree it's, it's like valuable. Thing. I mean, it's easier to think about when you're like just changing status to add the count, but delivery services are quite a bit more complicated, and especially because it has other tentacles into other tables and stuff too. So it's the only reason why. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Um, it's Again, it's not a priority for this. I don't think it's strictly necessary, but it's one of the things as soon as this is done and the problem is solved, it's on the list of things that, that shouldn't be difficult and we should do. Well, I guess the, what I'm hearing, though, it sounds like we will go to, in the process of, of adopting this, we will go to a more restrictive system for a period of time because we won't have the means to, to bypass this functionality. Because do we, does anybody know if we have any delivery? Well, we don't currently have the ability anyway, right? So currently, we we just click snapshot. So yeah, currently you're sitting there with a gun anyway, and then, you know. No, when you queue updates, if you went and changed the origin on two delivery services and queue updates, you get it all at once because the config comes down. Unless Yagi comes by and pushes updates halfway through. What? Unless Yagi comes by and pushes updates halfway through. Yeah. Right. So, but, I, mean, that's, yeah. I, I agree we should do it 100% and maybe it's even required before we actually give random tenants it the ability. Might, or maybe maybe a tenant user has this workflow and an admin user has the shoot yourself in the foot for sure. or something. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. So, so talking about the actual snapshot queue automation, I think if, if this is the algorithmically hard problem, um, the snapshot queue automation is the the central difficult problem um, of of change integrity and all of this timestamp stuff. So so how that's working? Um, snapshots, uh, especially for servers, um, I believe also for delivery services, will actually generate two snapshots in that database. So that that table I was talking about for delivery service or for server snapshots. There will actually be two generated, um, and the reason for that is additions and subtractions, right? So you can you can make changes to a server that in in a single snapshot in a single set of you know you change some rows and you hit snapshot or apply that are, encompass both additions and deletions, things that need to go to the router first and the cache first. And currently, we don't have any way to to safely do that. Um, you, we just push it out. But the way the the, the plan is to do two separate snapshots, one for that addition and one for that deletion, and those those separate timestamps again will be sent to this is the addition snapshot and it'll be sent to the cache first to be added to its config and the, the subtraction will be sent to the router first. Um, and yeah, here so an example is adding a delivery service regex is something that's an addition needs to go to the cache first and you remove a server from a delivery service. That's that's a deletion that needs to be pulled out of the router before we pull it out of the cache config. Uh, so again, kind of, like I just said, servers, which is really ORT making that request, um, are given the latest additions. They're given the latest additions for that snapshot. Again, this is all in that select query. The latest additions and the latest subtraction that is on all the routers. So we will also have to look and see what is on the routers that has been subtracted to make sure that every router has it and then it's safe to put it on the servers. And the routers have the reverse. They have all the latest subtractions because if you're removing it, it goes to the routers first and they select the latest addition that is on all the servers. So again, we'll have to, we'll have, to have the data of what snapshot is on every server and make sure that, that those additions are on all the servers and then put it on the CR config. You might have noticed we don't actually have either of those data right now. Traffic Ops and really none of our components have 
the data of what is on the routers or what is on the servers. So, so the plan is we, we, we have to get that data. So the easiest way to get that with ORT is right now we set the update pending flag to false when ORT finishes. We change that to a timestamp and put that in a table. So we'll have a table of servers and the latest applied CR config timestamp, which is again that snapshot for every server. That tells us what CR config, what config is on every server to know if it's safe to send to the router. And then we have to do the same for the router. Sorry? Just oh. So we have to do the same for the router. So again, we don't know what's on the routers at the moment. Our current plan, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can make a microservice, um, but something has to do it. So our current plan is to put that in the monitor. Um, the monitor is already pulling all the caches. We can have it pull the routers. That gives us some more flexibility there too. Maybe we want to pull router health, but the plan is to put in the monitors. It can check the router. The router is actually currently serving the latest CR config on an endpoint. There's a, a, a debug endpoint the router has um, that has that data. So the monitor can pull it, and then the monitor can insert it into traffic ops. Um, so with those done, traffic ops will then know what config is on and what the, the date of what config is on every router and every cache, and then we can use those those SQL queries, again, to build the config to put on the server to know what all subtractions have been all given to the routers and are safe to put on the server, and what all additions are on all the servers and are safe to put on the router. Yes? Question. Yeah. As I see it, the legal service, the legal service, or removing well, the entire delivery service, but maybe you're changing something yes. within the delivery service. Yeah, okay. So, adding the server is the scenario of adding the server, but then you will further change the delivery service. Yeah. Okay. So how do you mean? So, so with, with delivery services, most possibly everything is, a, is an addition, right? So if you're changing something, there's nothing we can do except apply it. You know, if you're changing one particular field, well, I would hope that you've stopped sending your clients to, to that thing, whatever you change. There's, there's no way to simultaneously do all of that. Um, so, so most things for delivery service are, are an addition and need to go to the cache first and then to the router. Does that make sense? Yes. So the there, there, there are things that the router edit, auto response edit, that might be some. Yeah, so that might be that might be. What, I'm I'm using addition and subtraction, but that might be an example of something that needs to go to the router first. Yeah. Um. So Rob. Yes. When you're trying to synchronize, or when you're trying to have traffic router changes behavior based on what's on the caches, it seems like there's some set of changes for which uh, the router doesn't care which particular version of the configuration is on the cache. If you're adding some header rewrites or something that don't really do anything critical. Sure. It doesn't matter. But then if you go do something like turn on, uh, I don't know, like URL signing or something like that where the router's involved in it. Suddenly, the router needs to know, hey, which which caches have like beyond this particular version of configuration. Right. So, um, so the router might want to send only traffic to like a subset of the caches that are up to date with the latest. Maybe that's not a good example, but maybe you like that. That's why the servers ORT will set the timestamp that it has, and it will the only the. Uh, only the additions that have made it to all the servers will get applied to the router. Right, right. So, and, and if a server is offline, um, that will be taken into account there, and not um, an offline server won't get counted against it being on all servers. Okay, so the goal, so the policy is 
wait until it's applied everywhere. Yeah, so, and, and again, we've got a document. This is a very high level yeah. present. We, we've got a document that's much more in-depth, but, but if you're worried about what, what Dylan is saying, I don't fully understand what you're worried about. But if, if, that, if that's your concern of what if a cache is offline, so the, the current plan is, is to make the monitor aware of this and make the monitor uh, indicate that a cache that is unavailable is, is the latest timestamp, which is to say to, to effectively the monitor is lying to traffic ops saying this cache has the latest config. And then the monitors will refuse to mark that cache available until it has the latest config. And so that, that solves the problem of what happens if something is down and never comes back up, and so we never put it on the router. Um, it's, it, it's a kind of awkward, but if there's a better way to do it, I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, maybe in, uh, think about, about this, there's flows. Okay. You know that those, the, each configuration, each delivery service assigned cache is the row in your remote, in the remote uh, config. So, and if you're thinking about it, about it as the addition and deletion, uh, addition and deletion, so the routers need, need to be aware of uh, in the in the uh, in the delivery service level which uh, worlds exist. This is the the atomic item you have. That right. So effectively, the way that we're doing that is is. The, the router isn't actually aware of it, we're, but traffic ops is aware of it, and so traffic ops is generating the config for that router based on what rows exist and, and that it knows are on all the caches. So the, the monitor which flows to the router will request the CR config, and traffic ops will say, I know that all of these things have been added to the cache, and so push those through, and then these things haven't, and so don't give those to the router. I kind of like the idea that the router via the monitor knows what's running on the network and can make a decision about what to activate. But I, there's probably benefits both ways. So how do you mean what's running on the network? I think what, I think what Nir was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, but if the cache is all advertised, what individually, what, what version or what timestamp they have for a given delivery service or for all delivery services, the monitors or routers can see that directly, not via the traffic ops. So why not? So so it's it's kind of a it's been a goal for us to have traffic ops as what we call the source of truth. So what's the advantage of, of bypassing that so I mean my concern is if traffic ops if it, if if it's the monitor directly talking to the cache, then it's very difficult to get an administrator insight into that. You know, you can look at traffic ops as as this is and no, this is what's on the caches, this is what's on the routers, you can figure all that out from yeah. the database. But if they're talking to each other... Yeah, that, I mean, my, my talk tomorrow, I'm going to say, we really want the administrator to be able to see exactly like what those versions are. Um, but I was just thinking in terms of the overall flow, instead of having configuration go from traffic ops down to the cache, back to traffic ops, and then to the router, which is kind of a, a, new, a new path of information, if we reuse the cache or traffic ops to cache, to monitor, to router. That's all existing for that. So I see what you're saying. So the monitor is already pulling the cache. Yeah. So we could do it that way, but then it seems like it would kind of, it would kind of divide the, the source of truth so that the source of truth of where, what everything has what configuration is no longer just traffic ops, but it would also be the monitor. Yeah. Like you'd have a lot of this data in the ops and then you'd have a little bit in the monitor. Right. I get that. I, you like the idea that now it's traffic ops that controls basically the source of truth where where all the configuration is at. I think when you do what he says, it's traffic ops still is the source of truth, and that is the intended state. But the existing state is what goes into traffic monitor, and they may not be the same. In, a, in an ideal world, they are. But I think there may be a discrepancy between the intended state and the, and the state that you have. And traffic monitor well, and never is the be. state that you have. Yeah, and they won't be the state as as you're making changes all the time. So, it's going exactly. to be so. I think there's there's a reason to be saying let's put that whatever indicator for what is running on the cache, put that in the, the A stats and, and report that back to traffic monitor because it's a better decision point than what the intended state. So, again, so so another concern I have is is that 
we have a lot of monitors, right? So, so then it's not a single point of truth. It's, it's that individual monitor when you've got two or four or however many. Which and that's we'll, why you could say that's why we have the combined health uh, protocol and, you know, those type of things. So they, you know, so I, I can <coughs> just try to think for a okay. We've run into cases where config's gotten pushed down. Traffic line that X gets up and gets Y. That's not what we're running in you know? yeah, that's a you know? So having an understanding of when you're in that state, yes, a single source source of truth from the management station can find what you want to have applied and you think is down there, but not what's actually running on the system. So but but you still don't know that information because how does how does traffic server know the snapshot of this of the CR config that it was given? Right, that's an ORT, but that's not going to be in any of the configs for ATS. You put it in as a, as a JSON object. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not proposing a solution. I mean, that's, there. there's, no, that's there's, no, there's no rocket science there, right? You put a timestamp in it now, it's almost the same. Sure. I'm not sure you go about that. I think. The monitor is responsible for the state of the cache. It monitors the caches on that station, but it, the configuration and the state of configuration, which is and we will be discussing the state machine of configuration, you don't want the monitor state machine. Yes, yeah, so, so another the issue. Monitor, you know, the, monitor, like, no. the monitor are not in sync and they are stateless. And they are, they are not, yeah. they are not so, so I'm not even sure this they, is. They, they, this kind of state machine, you are perfectly uh, applying the state machine of, uh, of configuration state uh, uh, rollout. And this kind of role should be done in the ops. Well, only right. So, so like what Nir is saying, you'd need the entire state machine and the monitor. So I'm not even sure the monitor can do this without having the full I database. You need the state machine at all in the monitor. What you should, what you should be able to do, uh, you, uh, you should report what version, which version is applied on that cache through a stats that you roll into traffic monitor. Okay, so you're saying the and monitor reports match, that and then writes it to the... If it doesn't the... match what the intended state is, you should flag that as, as a problem. That's, but that's not a state machine, right? That's just I'm a single saying, indicator. I don't care if it's a state machine or not. I, I think that's... What but what I'm saying is it won't work. What I'm saying... Is that whatever, whatever monitor is responsible for that cache is the one that double checks it, and if what matches the actual source of truth isn't there, then we say, hey, there's a problem. Like, we're not using but what, I, what I'm trying to say is that that's the normal operation. It's never going to match. Because you're going to have people making changes. You've got 100 tenants, 1,000 tenants, uh -huh. all making changes all at once. The servers, the, no cache is ever going to have the actual latest thing while it's changing on the fly. So you you can't just mark in the monitor and say, well, it doesn't have the latest. We're going to flag it. We're not going to do stuff with it. We're going to mark it unavailable. They're always going to be unavailable. You're making decisions in router based on what you would send that cache. Then I go back to the original argument. Maybe you don't flag it, but you want to do it based on what's on that cache, not on what's intended to be on that cache. Yeah, because right, it may be right. Going through in the next right. Minutes. You don't and have to do the so, traffic in three so, minutes. Right, and so this plan does that with traffic ops, so that when the monitor asks for a CR config, we build that for for every delivery service for every cache based on what's actually on that cache and has been reported from the timestamp. So how can we build that? I mean, how can the monitor even build that to send to the router without being aware of the entire history? Because that cache could be ten iterations behind. You mentioned the cell config. The cell config has the table of server and the little cell uh, of the site. It will now have a, a, a table of servers and the little service timestamp uh, that should be applied. This is the desired state. Okay? And you can now add another another file sitting near near the cell config and have a much faster uh, uh, update uh, full wave that show the real thing. Okay? And in the same format, in the same format of server to deliver service of uh, applying this will, will be the real file that the router will use with the same logic. That's it. See, see, so, so, what I'm what I'm saying is you it's can the be same, it's the same deal. You, 
you want to do it back, report back up and go, well, that way, I think that way, what, what I'm trying to say is it's not that simple because the, the CR config that's being built is being built dynamically from all of those timestamps. So this delivery service might be two iterations back. And it's not even per delivery service, right? This delivery service might need to insert the status of this server in this particular fashion. Um, that is, this particular server is, is five timestamps back, and this one is ten timestamps back. And we have to build that from the database. So the monitor couldn't build that without having the full database of traffic ops on the monitor. Does that make sense? <coughs> it does, but it worries me. It's not simple. I, I mean, I, I, I agree, and I don't like that it's not simple. I'm worried about the, 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 the half stage you can be in, where the system, is, the system is running, and you rolled out a change, and half your servers are going to have the change, you know, and then the other half are not going to have the change. And it's really hard to figure out where you are in this. I think that's one of the biggest benefits of using timestamps as opposed to some other mode of state machine, uh -huh. like, like integers or something, yes. is you can figure it out with timestamps. In fact, we can even write APIs, GUIs, to, to see that to, at any given time, see this is the state we're in now. This is the state we were in, at, you know, 10 minutes ago. And this is where our problem happened. I, I think timestamps will really help with that. So, <coughs> it, it makes it easier. I agree with you there because you can at least rebuild it, right? Are you playing yeah. a proof of concept before so that we can see and look at these scenarios? Or I don't it? know that that's even possible. Again, yeah. this is like a year, multi-year project. Um, it would be a massive. I mean. So we're so we're going in a lot of theory then in terms of moving forward. We don't know if it's going to work or not. Why? What? What? what well, and that's kind of my next slide. Oh, slides, yeah. we so, so I, I have a slide that kind of shows the usage. So the monitor re requests the CR config from the traffic ops, which is what happens now. But with the new s system, it, it will request the CR config, and traffic ops will give it the CR config based on what is safely on all the caches. The router requested from the monitor, and then again the monitor will now be pulling the router and get the CR config and push that to traffic ops. And then if there's if there was a subtraction that needed removed from the router first, then ORT will now get we have a new router snapshot, the router has that new thing, and it's safe to actually give that to ORT. And again, all that will happen transparently in traffic ops. The OR, again, the endpoints stay the same. One of the goals of this whole thing is to keep the APIs the same. So the monitor just requests its normal CR configs. The ORT requests its normal configs. And traffic ops, again, as that central source of, source of truth, will give them the things it's safe for them to have. And it works in the opposite direction the same way. There's an addition that needs to go on the cache first. It, it's sent to the cache, just like it always has been. The update flag now sets the timestamps. The traffic ops knows what CR config that cache has at that, that particular timestamp snapshot. Uh, and then the monitor gets that CR config, and Traffic Ops, again, transparently builds it. The monitor isn't, doesn't have to change anything from what it is today. Traffic Ops just transparently gives it, these are the things it's safe for you to have, including this new addition that's now on that cache, and it goes to the router. So. Have you thought about how you're going to develop this without touching the existing endpoints and touching the existing functions? Yes, kind of um, and that's kind of this <laughs> slide. Um, so, so <laughs> it is a good question. Please, which, no, no, no. It's yeah, a great question. That's why I have a slide for it. Um, so yeah, we I've, we've done a lot of thought of what we can do incrementally, one at a time. Um, step one is to move traffic ops to go. It's not strictly necessary, but we would have to replicate everything we're doing in Perl, all of those inserts and updates to everything to inserts, uh, adding the database fields. Again, that's the deleted fields and the timestamps. Most of the timestamps exist. We just have to verify they're not null uh, and they're updated on insert. Um, then changing all of the API code to select the latest. And remember, this is this is developing as we're going. So. Change, we can change the code to select the latest, and the current step is still inserting, so there's only one row that is the latest. So we can change it to do what 
is going to be the eventual select, and it'll, it'll work with the current code. And then we can change it to insert, not update. So you can see how we can hopefully incrementally add these things one at a time with everything still working, and rather than making one giant 10,000 line pull request. Um, so what, what about the Perl? Again, the the plan is to move the traffic up to go. Pulled out eventually. Yeah. This is basically yeah. one of the reasons I invited to this because I knew that the list of API API is so then, again, adding the snapshots, which we can add those, add the buttons to do them, and we don't actually have to change anything in the code. Um, and then we can change the CR config. Um, I'm sorry, we can add the monitor and router CR config stuff to insert it in the database so that we know what the router has. Then we can change the update flag on our RT. And then we can finally change the actual CR config to use all of those complicated queries. This, this is by far the hardest part, I think. Um, but once all of that stuff is done, we can do all of this stuff, one through seven, safely, independently, and then change the CR config to, to actually generate based on the latest, the latest snapshot that each router and cache have. Um, and so future work, uh, again, change sets. It's definitely something we want, we want to do, the only some things that have changed. Timestamps will make that much easier. So once, if, if we do this plan and solve this problem so that we have timestamps for everything, it'll be much easier to do change sets. Um, reducing the application time, again, we can reduce poll times if we're doing things like if modified sense or a custom get modified endpoint. Um, it'll be much easier to do all that with timestamps. We know what's modified since a given time that that particular monitor last requested. Uh, UI displaying the progress. So like you were saying, Jan, uh, how do we know what's where, when? We have timestamps. We have all the data. So I think it would be pretty easy, once all this is in, to write an endpoint, maybe even a UI, you know, a GUI for tenants that they can see, I did this change. Here's where it is. It's on the routers. It's on the, the cache. They can watch it flow through we the system. We also really need to implement a staging area where you uh, test uh, things in staging yeah. before you uh, yeah, you could duplicate all the snapshot tables and have a staging snapshots, and it'd be really easy to, to build all that so same. You apply, do a stage yeah. first, and then apply same, after you see it inside. All those complicated select queries, they're identical. They just select from these tables instead of these. Uh, and, and again, a history inspector. Something goes wrong. Something's wrong on the CDN. Maybe you didn't even know. Maybe it's something wrong from like six months ago. That history is all there. Um, you, you can write code, again, to select build me the CR config as it looked on, you know, June 17th at 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of things that timestamps will just make a lot easier um, and gives us a lot of power. It didn't okay. uh, incrementally go through the changes. Yeah, you could, time right. the right. you could, you could make a simulator that steps one at a time and shows you Track how... Control by something. Yeah. It's yes. very quick. Um, so I, I, there's a lot about like inserts, a lot of things being replaced by database inserts, right? Um, will those rows ever get cleaned up at some point? So yeah, that's that's a question right. I've gotten every time I've talked about this. <laughs> okay. um, our database at Comcast, which we're probably the biggest CDN in uh, traffic control, our database is like kilobytes. You dump it to text SQL, and it's like megabytes. So okay. I, I suspect that it, you could add and just keep inserting for like 10 years, and it wouldn't be more than a few gigabytes. If I'm wrong, the answer is yes. You can do what you're asking. It would be fairly easy, again, with all those timestamps, it would be yeah. fairly easy to build a query that says, select everything that is the oldest that all the routers have and all the caches have, and then I know these timestamps are all okay. older than that, and delete them. Yeah, I'm, I'm less worried about disk space and more worried about um, query time. Speed, yeah. 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 Um, and last in, in general, so just real brief, in general, I've seen good performance with Postgres with that. Postgres okay. tends to put that on disk, and it'll never load into memory again. Okay. So, but there is an infinite uh, space available. 
database servers. Yes, it is right. totally valid point. Yeah, right. I think we do need to find some way to trail the past if possible. I think we should have the ability. I really, really yeah. don't want to see us ever do it because it's so powerful to have that data yeah. if we don't I need to. Agree. Yeah. I like the, uh, the utility you get by being able no. to go back in time or but, forward in time. But, but yeah, if we need to, if it gets too big, it shouldn't be very difficult to write. Make sure you don't design us into a corner so we can't. Yeah, no, we, we won't. It should be easy. Thanks, Rob.